Jacob was poisoned. He told me, and he was operated. Doctors attempted to deal with the poison. The poison affected his health so badly, by the time he was flown out for treatment, he was not in a position to recover. He was too weak. Politicians and some leaders in Acholi jumped on that poisonous statement, which compared the president to direct police intervene and investigate those spreading allegations. We are going to go for them because I have heard some people saying that, oh, some, some people killed Olanya. Olanya was killed. The police are going to come and say, okay, you tell us, you seem to have some information. Oh, yes, because if you say he... he, he because Olanya did not die in a private home. He died in a highly reputable hospital. Police from then picked interest in the case and have summoned Mzai Nathan Rokoli. Politicians, including the NUPU president, Robert Chagulani Sentamu, Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Badiomonsi, NRM Vice Chairman in Buganda, Godfrey Kiwanda, among others, and some cultural leaders in Acholi. Honorable Gilbert Olanya, Honorable Santa Okot, Honorable Chagulani Sentamu Robert, Boss Mitchell Tim, Muzelo Cory Nathan, uh, selected cultural and local leaders, and several other bloggers. These are expected to appear at the Criminal Investigation Directorate to provide evidence about a death of the late speaker, which contradicts from the medical report. The is very clear. This is the record that we have. These are the medical records. Do you have something contrary? There is no trace of poison in any of the medical research, uh, of the medical records. The medical report presented to the public by the health experts stipulates that the late speaker, Jacob Olanya, died of multiple organs failure. We are focusing on those who are claiming who have uh, uh, other speculative causes and we are asking them to substantiate the allegations that uh, poisoning was uh, uh, put in effect and uh, could have caused the death of the of the honorable speaker the events that followed the death of jacob olanya attracted the public attention and many politicians picked interest with unclear motives abdul nasili lubwama ubc news and the fishing community in Uganda has up to the end of April 2022 to register in order to enable authorities take stock of the fisheries sector. This reminder comes barely days after National Fisheries in Research Institute launched the fish data portal to take stock of the country's fisheries species. Our State Minister for Fisheries, Helen Adoa, wants the fishmongers to register and take advantage of government programs, including the recently launched Irish model. Let's take a look. I want to repeat what I've always said. A hungry uh, fisherman is a angry fisherman. Fishing continues to maintain its position as the second largest foreign exchange earner in Uganda. From the Bank of Uganda data, Uganda brought in 180 million in 2020 from export to international markets and another 55 million dollars from regional fish trade this is the bank of uganda data which is captured as information as fish is crossing the border through ura system this makes it necessary for government to streamline the sector it is the reason why the initial registration deadline for fishermen has been extended from march 31st to April 30th, 2022. Our registration is not about money, it's not about uh, taxing them, but it's about getting to know who is in which water body. It helps us to take our stock. When you register, it makes us to know that the capacity of Lake Yoga is 15,000. 
a day 15,000, so that we play in between 11,000 to 15, not beyond. Because if it goes to 20, 30,000, that will be depleting the lake. This move comes at a time. The fisheries sector has established an online portal for fisheries related data as recently launched in Kampala. We are very happy with, um, with the project from the lab to the world. Oh, very interesting topic. It has emerged at the right time when we really need to see that this information sharing becomes a reality. This information reaches to more people. Adopting research is said to be one of the leading arms in the fisheries sector. With this in place, fishermen could benefit from government programs, including the new parish development model. And I also want to urge you the fish, a fishing community, please register wherever you are, form groups, so that when a parish model comes, you have groups and then you get that money and you are better off buying good fishing gears. Uganda is endowed with the water bodies including lakes, whose natives depend on aquaculture as the main source of livelihood. Henry Okrut, UBC. Now, Uganda Kingdom has postponed the Kavaka birthday celebrations that take place on 13th April every year. The Katikiro of Uganda, Charles Peter Maiga, told a press conference at Bulange Mengo that the Kavaka birthday run will be organized when the Kavaka returns from abroad. Every 30th April, Buganda celebrates the birthday of Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mutevi II. A Kabaka run is organized, but for this year to be organized on a day yet to be communicated by the kingdom. On Wednesday 13th, April 2022, Kabaka will be 67 years. For the first time, celebrations have been postponed. In that case, we should have run yesterday. Because yesterday is the Sunday preceding the Kabaka's birthday. The Kabaka's birthday usually has two purposes. The first one is to celebrate the Kabaka's birthday. The second one is to highlight a particular theme, especially related to health. Previously, Kabaka birthday run, always organized on Sunday preceding the birthday, have been postponed till Kabaka returns from abroad. Kabaka is still out of the country. As you know, he flags us off. So for those two reasons, we didn't run yesterday. We are hoping to have the birthday run somewhere in, in, in May. But we shall let you know the actual date quite soon, I expect. And after the Kabaka has returned uh, from Europe. The Katikiro also clarifies on the Kabaka's health status. While they are, because they are medical personnel, and they've been looking at him before, they, they examine him to see how he's progressing with the, uh, with, you know, the, the, the coverage. On the other hand, Katikiro has advised government to always come out clear air on sickness of government officials to prevent speculation from the public. It's not handled properly. Suspicions arise and conspiracy theories gain traction. Conspiracy theories, you know, I think they get popular with the public because the official news channels are silent. So I think communication is important in order to stem the belief that every time that people die, they're being poisoned. Brian Tumwenebya Rohanga, Andrew Sebida, UBC News. Meanwhile, the joint security agencies within Kampala metropolitan area have carried out an operation and arrested 178 suspects actively involved in the panga wielding attacks in Namungona, Chengera, Nansana, Kawempe and Kasangati. Police spokesperson Fred Ananga told a weekly police briefing at police headquarters in Naguru that those arrested were found with exhibits such as pangas, television sets, knives and iron bars.
In Nansana, 22 suspects arrested were connected with panga welding attacks in the LS1 villages of Chigoma, Mastowa, Ganda, Nansana West and Nabweru North. Uh, the team uh, in uh, Chengera and in Sanji started by arresting a notorious uh, panga welding assailant called Sam Geni Rashid, 28 year old, casual work and resident of Natete Kutano who managed to lead us. We found him with house-breaking implements, uh, two iron bars, a torch, and four bunches of keys, and other clothes that uh, uh, he usually changes after the mission. He managed to lead us to their hideouts in Shinawa, Kolokoro, Kaukurod, and Bengaz, where we arrested 64 suspects, other suspects were arrested from Nabingo and uh, Soweto, Chengera, where we recovered uh, uh, several exhibits of pangas, TVs, knives, wooden bars with pointed nails, hammers, uh, opium, among others. 77 were arrested in Rubaga Division. 63 have been charged to court and Enanga highlights that, that during the screening it was noticed that most of these arrested are interested in cash. In our screening, uh, we noticed that most of the burglars uh, and robbers are young men between 18 to 24 years uh, whose motivation is economic gain uh, because uh, their target is basically cash. Uh, they also target phones, electronics like TVs and other smaller valuables. And then there are those who are also doing it out of excitement. That when they go into these homes, they find lone women whom they sexually assault. Meanwhile, Forum for Democratic Change has questioned the rationale of LDUs. What you are asking ourselves, these people who have been cut with pangas have been making alarms. Nobody comes to help them. We have our LDUs we trained. Where did we put these LDUs? That's the question which we want the army to explain because they told us they were they'd be part of the army. So we're asking the army, where did they take our LDUs who are supposed to be guarding our villages? Brian Tumwenebia Rohanga, UBC News. Now, the Association of Housewives have paraded at different roundabouts in Kampala, including Garden City, carrying placards airing their grievances against their husbands. Uh, police has arrested and detained them at CPS for a while until further clarifications. Monday early morning, a group of housewives have staged a demonstration protesting different issues against their husbands. <laughs> the women decry abandonment by their husbands, who deny them necessities including love, food, money among others. <laughs> so we are advocating for several things, like uh, increment of Kameza money uh, by our husbands. We are advocating for, 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 for more time hmm, with our husbands. <laughs> So, bali busy, ba mwe bali mukampala, mwe bali everywhere, ba just loitering around, ba 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 sajaba fe. For abacha la be waka ni tusigale waka nenga te. Tetuma ina ba sajaje bali in fact. Una inzibwa ba bureke denyo ba mama. So, ovuna ni bamba munga mukwa saganya. Chiba chiba chiangu wani ate ba ba di daba abacha la ni ba ba fula buri chimu. However, while at Garden City roundabout, where they planned to converge, police came around and stopped the conference, arrested the women and detained them at CPS. On that note, without any disturbance, don't disturb me. If you disturb me, I'll disturb you. Are we together? Let us cooperate. Are we together? <laughs> Later on, police released the women after a discussion. Nobody has been beaten. We have moved our sisters and brothers. 
If it was be like a lava, we will move like a lava. And that's the way to go. But we have come to realize there was a mistake in communication. One, the area where you wait, people, people who organize, who organize to, do, to block the government of the president. And among the areas which had been planned to be used, it was where you have been. So when we saw you there, automatically we knew these are the people who have organized to block the government of the president. That's why we came in to bring you so you can listen to you. You're not under what? Arrest. You get me? Yes. You have clarified, you are free. Yeah. We brought you here to ensure that we get your hand amicably. Other, other systems will follow. These waves are organizing another open conference on Wednesday at NCC to throw more light about the husbands. Shredat Nasaku, UBC News. Well, now the debate for men not taking up their full responsibility, supporting the daily family needs is what women are saying is causing many families to break up. However, in this story, Robert Onyango analyzes what is causing instability in many homes. This Monday, a section of women activists took to the streets of Kampala to protest against, among others, the continued inadequate daily allowances being given to them by their husbands, commonly known as Kameza money. On Kameza, so that we, we get what you want. This debate has received wide criticism and divided opinion. Women who are demonstrating, well, it's a pain, but I'm wondering whether they gain from that. It could be, yes, but you see, family in terms of the right to privacy is something that everybody respects. According to Sam Sendwala, a men's rights advocate, gone are the days where marriage partners was not only a matter entirely left to both parties, but to other family members. Those days they used to guide, they used even to hope you get that woman from a particular family. Nowadays we hustle our way out to get these wives. The problem is we are not talked to, we are not following the family structures of how to choose a partner. It is also urged that the transitioning world now calls for adjustments for stable families. 50 or 60 years ago, boys were given preference to girls in terms of access to education, access to resources. But we are seeing things change, especially when this constitution of the 1995 came into action, where they introduced the concept or the principle of affirmative action. A woman needs to hope out. A man needs to know his responsibilities. The reason why we don't need housewives is because life is unpredictable. Those days we had a few diseases that uh, wouldn't affect so much the man. Nowadays we have so many diseases that can put down the man. And if you want to depend on this man who is not healthy, the family is going to, to die of anger. Among the questions which women need answers to their spouses is why they come back late home or never. The reason after work, a man says, let me go catch up with my colleagues, my friends. They take some beers. They want to go home. And many of them, by the way, when they reach their compounds where they sleep, they just bend on the car, car seats. They sleep. They sleep in the cars because there is trouble in the house. There is trouble in the house. There is a fire burning in the house. So men are also emotional. They also have feelings. When you keep on shouting at them, doing this, even thinking for them that they have been with other women, and so sometimes it is not the case. It is pointed out that such conditions and others are making many men look at marriage as the last option. Uh, because you no longer have youth who are looking forward to a family. You have youth who, who really think that they don't want that kind of responsibility, particularly boys. They don't want that responsibility that, you know, that we have always known that men are supposed to take care of their families. So they don't want that responsibility. Actually, what most boys now are doing, they just impregnate one girl, they give them a child, they impregnate another. 
Many activists, however, can confidently confirm that indeed some allegations against them are very true but unavoidable. Married men give side chicks a peace of mind. And these side chicks know how to handle these men. So when a man gets a, a lot of good care from this side chick, my dear, hey, you have to cry for yourself. This side chick knows even the kind of food this man would take. Side chick can even buy a good perfume. However much side chick is depending on this married man of yours, in this case, women are advised to move out of the comfort zone where they expect to be spoon-fed by men at all times, but rather reflect on that life without men or husbands. We also think that we need to educate our young women uh, that being economically independent is quite important. So you don't just be there waiting for somebody to take care of you. And then if in case they don't, then it becomes, your life just ends like that. So, Makera University lecturer from School of Women and Gender Studies, Dr. Nensima Ani, alludes that money has totally shifted loyalty among partners. Even when we are talking about gender inequalities, for example, you realize that the big issue is really about money and poverty. So... Before, we were not having those capitalist tendencies of, you know, money, money, money. But now, it's a norm. The debate on whether the responsibility of taking care of a family is entirely a money's task can be a good one for days. But to cut it short, many families are under these conditions due to the economic disability. Robert Onyango, UBC News. Well, Napak District LC5 Chairperson John Paul Cadet has pro a proposal rather, for government to put up water sources in all parts of the district to stop the Bokora people crossing to, from crossing to Teso in search for water and pasture. This follows the clashes that occurred in Kapilabyong District on the 4th of April where, the three, where three Karimajong were killed. Um. Let the people stay here for maybe a week or three days. So now the animals that have come, they, they, because of the fear of the animals that have been confiscated already. The Karimojong pastoralists grazing from Teso, especially in Katakwa and Kapalibyong districts, fear the increasing insecurity and limited water sources. In this current situation, water is a problem and faster for the animals. And then also the issue of insecurity. They are, they are still grappling with it. The situation from there now has forced them to come back here, where there is no grass, there is nothing. They graze around Nakichemet Dam, the biggest water source in the district. They left Teso following an alleged Karimojong cut or wrestling murder. Some pastoralists blame the JE from Kotido who misbehaved in Teso, leading to the expulsion of all Karimojong pastoralists grazing from the Teso. They have been uh, relying on the other green belt of Peitolim, but ever since the G started attacking the other side, all of them were generalized as raiders from the Teso community. And they were forced, one time Ites was even ganged up and they went to attack them in their homes with the pangas, accusing them of raiding their uh, raiding animals at night the G had raided the animals and uh, injured two eaters and injured two karamojongs the bokora whom i carried to matai so they thought this could be the warriors and they mounted a mob justice and these three people were lynched and one of them is actually the, the soldier who came for a pass the LC5 chairperson for Napak District, John Paul Cadet, blames some leaders and criminal elements from Teso, who has caused the current situation. Pressure from a certain group, probably called opposition, to the leadership in Teso. And that is what is inserting what you call pressure. And now the leaders are also, also taking that kind of a corner without completely analyzing the situation. So they make those blunt statements which of course will cause violence. Kodet also wants Karakunas, who
who had the youth trained and armed with five guns per village. The, the Karachunas are, are actually recruited. If, formerly we used to have vigilante. Later on we went to LDUs. So if government could actually give us, like specifically my district, the LDUs in, the, in that form, like five per parish will save because uh, I want these guns to be registered. The people will be using it. The Bokora from Napak District 1 government resolved the water problem in the area. Government to give us more water this time, to reduce this, our animals going there for pass, I mean for water. What is making us go to Teso is, the, is because of the water. The pasture we have. Calling upon government at least to address the issue of insecurity so that they can come back to normal life. Over 25,000 Karimojong animals have been grazing from Teso since December last year. 10,000 animals have been returned to Karamoja, while over 100 animals are missing. All right, Buganda Road Magistrates Court has issued a warrant of arrest against four people who stood surety for prominent novelist Kakwenza Rukirabasheja in the offensive communication case. Now, the accused Kakwenza and his four sureties failed to appear in court as directed in the last court sitting. Meanwhile, Judge Boniface Wamala has excused himself from handling Hassan Male Mabirizi case. In this case, Mabirizi wanted court to order prison authorities not to handcuff him on his way to court and within court premises citing that it violates his right to a fair trial. The last court sitting, Magistrate Douglas Singiza issued a warrant of arrest against a prominent novelist Kakwenza Lukilabasheja or his first duties to appear in court without fail to explain his whereabouts. Although court resumed today for further hearing, Kakwenza Lukilabasheja's duties, including Lea Julius Garisonga, the National Unit Platform Secretary General, Davis Lewis Lubongoya, and Anna Sheba were absent in court. Magistrate Douglas Sengiza issued a warrant of arrest against the four sureties. The sureties have breached their obligations. The prayer for discharge from this obligation by the sureties is a non-starter because a person cannot be discharged from an obligation which he or she has already broken. Number three, if the sureties appear in court with the money they executed, then they will have discharged their obligation and their warrant of arrest shall be cancelled. Although these orders were at first objected to by Kakwenza's legal team, they asked court to allow the sureties pay a fine of 10 million shillings each, leaving court with a burden to trace the accused. The bail which had been granted to Kakwenza Rukilabashaija had been automatically cancelled. And when it's cancelled, it means the sureties are detached from the accused person and therefore the accused person now becomes still a property of the state, no longer their property. However, court has not uh, bought uh, our arguments. However, as we speak now, we are going to talk to them and then probably find ways of uh, challenging this, this ruling and also get a state of execution of the same. Kakwenza Rukirabashaija is facing charges of offensive communication when he disturbed the peace of the person of President General Kaguta Museveni and the commander UPDF Land Forces, Lieutenant General Muhoz Kainerugaba, using his Twitter handle at Kakwenza Rukira. The matter will resume on the 9th of May, 2022. According to reliable sources, Kakwenza Rukira Basheja ran into exile in German. In another development, Judge Benfes Wamala has recused himself from handling Hassan Malema Bidiz's case. And I state that although the applicant has raised no concrete ground for my recusal, I find that it is better and in the interest of justice to recuse myself from this matter. I accordingly recuse myself and forward this case file to the registrar for further management. Hassan Malema Bidizi, who is pending with costs of three cases against him, which were dismissed by Judge Benefense Wamala, told court that he sees no justice and fair hearing before him. And I expected that the right fair hearing question had to be determined first to determine whether the submissions I, I made to court were valid under the circumstances then. Before Judge Wamala, Mabiz was pending with a case where he wanted court to order prison authorities from kind having him on his way to and within court premises.
alleging that it violates his rights to fair hearing. Judge Boniface Wamala closed the case file and ordered the file to be taken back to High Court Civil Division Registrar for allocation of another judge. Nantong Rebecca, Namamonde Deborah, UBC News. Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission has approved the program for the by-election of the Member of Parliament for Omoro County and District Councillor representing Lalogi Lakwaya in Omoro District. This was announced during a stakeholder meeting organised by the Electoral Commission. The position of the Moro County area Member of Parliament fell vacant after the death of the late former Speaker of Parliament, Jacobo Lokori Olanya. The law requires that after a vacancy has occurred in Parliament, the Electoral Commission shall conduct a by election within 60 days after receiving the notification from the Clerk of Parliament. And we received this notification on the 28th of March following the death of Honorable Lange. The chairperson, Electoral Commission of Uganda, Justice Simon Biabakama, has urged the people of Omoro County to avoid electoral violence. We want to create a rush for the program. We don't want you to say, for me, I'll be at Omoro County headquarters on this day. And the same man, another man, he says, I'll also be there. You see the danger? The supporters of the two parties meeting at one venue at the same time might cause some other of, of, of. Omoro District Chairperson Okero Douglas Peter told the Electoral Commission to prioritize civic education in this coming by election. We need to strengthen and enhance civic education to the people of Omoro County. If we strengthen civic education to the people of Omoro District, it means the people of Omoro County will ensure that they participate in the electoral process and exercise their democratic rights in this election. The CEOs and local community are desiring to witness respect of human rights and the election of leaders who will at the end of the day deliver service. In right now is a free and fair election where human rights will be respected and uh, there will be inclusion in all the processes of this uh, election in Moro County. First, the road structures. Like in Moro County, we have the road from Achia Town Council to Labora Road. I think this is our major problem, whereby we are requesting somebody who we, people will trust him or uh, I don't know, at least to struggle so that the government will bring the money to prepare that road. According to the Electoral Commission, the Omoro County by-election process will be concluded on the 26th of May 2022 as polling day and tallying of results. Well, with that, we take a quick break. We'll more details. This is News Tonight. Pay for your dream phone, Mpola Mpola. Get your dream phone today for as low as 1,400 Uganda shillings with free data for a year and pay slowly, slowly. All phones come with daily 50 MBs for 12 months. Repayment period is one year. Available at MTN Service Centers and M Copper Shops. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field could not be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Even with my grandson, a doctor at my side, I struggled to get the help I needed. 
But he saw something that day. He began to work day and night. He wouldn't quit, even when people said no. He wouldn't stop fighting. He knew... back you are still watching news tonight uh, principal judge dr flavian Ziesia, has ordered for a fresh trial in the case in which lucian suvuga the wife to the late bishop dunstan suvuga is claiming to be the rightful owner of saint peter's church land in endeavor according to the principal judge lucy nsuga was not had by the lower court and that her evidence on court record was not perused through by the trial judge head of high court land division justice edwis kate lima declared the Dovico Manja as the rightful owner of St. Peter and Deva Church land. In the case, the Dovico Manja had filed against Lucy in Suboga, the wife to the late Bishop Dan Stan in Suboga. Lucy in Suboga, who was not satisfied with the court judgment, filed a suit before the principal judge, Dr. Fraviana Zaija, asking for fresh trial, saying that he was not heard. Dr. Fraviana Zaija, after producing through her application, has to granted her prayers and ordered for a fresh trial. On receiving the judgment, devotees of St. Peter's Church in Deba expressed their opinions. <laughs> The complainant Lucy in Suboga, together with the devotees, whom we found at the church with prayer cards, had no kind words towards Dodo V. Komwanje. However, talking to Dodo Viko Manje, he was confident of winning the case again, insisting that he's the rightful owner of the land in question. Avunana, Agubavunana, Yawanguru Musangu. Atego Bagambi at Demuawabi. Atacha ina interest in Musango, again a Kuavachi. Chensu Viranti, Taina Chajakola, Gobavavi, Kubanga Tacha ina interest in Musango. Knowledge are near Gendu Huavu Musango. Sech tooth, Etakalia Ephraim Enterprises, Mwendi Director, Era Vedic of HD. St. Peter's Church in Deva was demolished on 11th August 2021 on orders of Dodo V. Komwanje after a court ruling that declared him the rightful owner of the land. Deborah Nama Monde, Nantongo Rebecca, UBC News. Yes. And business news experts have weighed in on the official joining of the Democratic Republic of Congo to the East African Community Bloc. DRC is the world's richest country in terms of mineral resources and it is thought it will boost trade in the region and increase the intra-East African trade. Experts also assess that DRC joining means that other East African countries now have a collective responsibility to ensure peace and stability in the country. Following the Democratic Republic of Congo's accession to the East African bloc, the East African member states are optimistic to optimize and exploit the new economic ventures from the world's wealthiest country with minerals. The Congo has up to 60% of the mineral deposits in the whole world. Well, you know what that, that means? If you start exploiting them, if we do the multiplier effect of the other value chains, because in the value chains, we are only at the raw material level. The content for making a phone, we only get that. But the value of a phone is quite high. So if we can have the 
phones made in the Congo using minerals in the Congo. That would be quite big. The East African member states now have an added advantage of tapping into Congo's rich mineral wealth, a country with a total population of 95 million people, cobalt, gold, aluminium, copper, rich biodiversity, and world's second largest rainforest. It has a very big population, about 95 million people. It has water bodies. If we can harness those water bodies, wow, that's great. Can make electricity, can make them navigable, can make them for irrigation. So it's, it's quite, it has a lot of arable land for, for farmland, rich biodiversity. If we use our biodiversity in, in the pharmaceuticals. The East African Business Council statistics show that the East African member states exposed to DRC Congo average to 13.5% in the last seven years to 2020, and the value of the imported goods into the DRC stood at $7.4 billion. Uh, in terms of trade, just start in terms of trade, we are right now doing about 13% in the last seven years or so with the Congo. Just imagine we increase that trade with the Congo as a ESC to just 30%. What would that mean? It would mean a very huge market. We are now doing about $900 million. If we can increase our percentage of trade with the Congo to maybe 30, maybe 40, because they have now joined, man, that would be billions of, of dollars of, of, of trade with them. So that one, is a, to me, is a very uh, something that we should look at. The Democratic Republic of Congo has been tagged a problem child. Despite its wealth, it has an ending conflict in the region with insecurity and main rebel activities, claiming lives of millions of people and properties, and this remains a hurdle to East African member states. Where do you take the interham? Where do you take them to? And those many others. These are not simple questions that we have an answer now. I can assure we don't have an answer. But those are the thorns. But when you come on the benefits, I can assure you there will be trade and investment between the, within the region, and that will benefit us. Sada Mubale, UBC News, Kampala. And the French government under its International Finance Institution Agence France du Development AFD is committed to support the Ugandan government in its quest to provide better living conditions for its rapidly growing population. Now, the organization is currently financing water and sanitation projects, which forms half of the organization's portfolio, that is urban development, electrification initiatives and private sector financing. The France Agency for Development has been present in Uganda for the last two decades and spent more than one billion US dollars in major projects that positively impact millions of people across the country. So Social Link is part of all the projects we are funding. We think about uh, gender equalities, we think about fighting uh, inequalities, enhancing uh, the, the standards of living, enhan enhancing uh, the livelihood. This is really uh, a core part of all our projects and a very strong commitment from our uh, project teams. AFD brings long maturity funding through loans with a loan maturity period of between 15 and 20 years. There is less debt repayment strain to the government. We are looking forward to increasing the volume of, uh, of, of financing we, uh, we, uh, we invest into, into the country because we believe uh, the needs are, are, are very important and uh, we believe also that we have a role in supporting those needs and supporting the Uganda government in uh, putting in place the right uh, infrastructure to, uh, to, to, to match the increasing population in the country and provide them with the best equipment and the best living condition possible. One of the milestone projects is the Katosi water treatment plant. Now operational, the 160,000 cubic meters of water per day plant is boosting water supply in at least three districts. And the project has been commissioned in, uh, in June uh, last year and is quite uh, a success. The needs are huge as you know the population of Kampala is growing very fast and uh, especially in the COVID uh, circumstance having uh, more supply of water is very important for the population so 
uh, we are very proud. I say we because uh, we did not finance it uh, alone. We were together with other financing partners like, like FW, like the European Union, the EIB. But we were lead and we are very proud of the result. Agency France de Development is continuing with the investment in the field of water and sanitation, urban development and supporting the energy sector linking to the National Development Plan 3 and Vision 2040. Denis Sigoa and Charlotte Amuge for UBC News. This is how we play. Play with power. This is how we do well. How we put a team together. This is how we pass on greatness. Because with this team to inspire us, there's nothing we can't do. Go for goals and win. Buy a Pepsi glass bottle or Pepsi Max 330ml. Check another crown and win soda, TVs, caps, t-shirts and cash. Redeem prizes at any Pepsi depot or truck countrywide. Terms and conditions apply. Pepsi. For the love of it. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans. Get a top up loan when you have insufficient funds to buy airtime, pay utility bills, or make payments at a local supermarket. Complete your transaction and pay later. Dial star 185 star 7 star 10 hash to opt in. Get an Airtel Money Quick Loan and pay later. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans in partnership with Housing Finance Bank and powered by Yabex. Airtel, the smartphone network. Manchester City played to a uh, 2-on-2 draw against Liverpool FC in what many looked at as the title decider. In Uganda, Liverpool fans held celebrations as to the club's existence. Let's take a look. But equally, the publicity it deserves. On the pitch, the tension of players and the fans all over, and it can only be a simple margin to separate the two sides. In Uganda, ahead of the Man City Liverpool game, Standard Chartered Bank hosted a Liverpool get together fans party at Club Governor. The game meant that whoever wins on the day would have an edge as the British Premier League takes shape. Fronting the bank more square more campaign, Standard Chartered Bank looks at rewarding its royal customers and football fans across Uganda. Yes, so we are here to launch Bank Moscomo. Um, it's season two. We had season one last year. And it's about opening a digital account. So you download SC Mobile, open up an account, a digital account, and then you fund your account. So you open it, you fund your account. So at every, at every level, you keep on earning different prizes. Regardless, both teams sharing spores at the end of the game, Liverpool fans couldn't agree more that Man City was a better team. Uh, it's been a very, very tense game. Uh, we've been very stressed. We are happy with the draw. Honestly, Man City is a strong team. And a draw um, at their stadium is, is the best thing we could hope for, really. First leg was 0-0, zero, zero. this one 2-2. Two, two. This one leaves to expectations since both teams exploit free-flowing football, are press high and are all offensive at all moments. So you realize that, yeah, why am I happy? Because Liverpool could have lost. There was a sterling center, the sterling scored, but then offside. There were so many moments where you think Liverpool was lagging behind. Yes, this event, I personally am a Liverpool fan and uh, it was really awesome. People having fun, getting together, releasing stress. It was really a nice event. The Liverpool fan base in Uganda is growing day by day and are set for better projects and activations in the near future.
Now, Namibia adjusted 185 runs for seven wickets in 20 overs to triumph against Uganda. Uganda's 133 runs all out in 19.2 overs could not change much for a charged home side in the capital, Windhoek. Uganda kicked off the game well, uh, dictating Peso to lead 60 by 60 runs rather for the loss of four wickets in 10 overs were blown away by Namibia's JJ Smith who registered 71 runoffs, 35 balls to steer them to a commanding 185 runs for seven wickets. Despite the loss, Uganda's half centurion Simon Sessazi struck 58 of 47 balls in the losing uh, cause, while Danish Nakrani also flourished in the game. It's an international shoot. I don't think he's taking enough praise for that young man the way he started with the ball. It went World Cup, so it's a big, a big achievement for me playing against this team and winning from them and bowling good against the World Cup team. That's all I can say. Then he just told me he would go, and I was just bad until I get my hand. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone phone network. The recap on those headlines. Summons Jacob Olanya's father, NUP President Robert Chagulanya, and Dr. Chris Badiomosi. Buganda Road Magistrates Court issues a warrant of arrest for Kakwenza's sureties. Fisheries Minister grants the fishing community up to end of April 2022 to register. And in sports, Namibia triumphs against charged Ugandan side. Daphne. Now let's uh, see the weather update with Daphne Kawasita. It's a pleasure having you for this weather update. I'm Daphne Kawasita and Samba from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Most parts of the country today had a sunny intervals, though some areas around the lake, some northern parts of the country had showers, especially in the evening hours for areas in the northern sector of the country. Areas around Lake Victoria had it in the morning hours. According to the report that received this morning, Kasese reported the highest amount of rainfall of 13.1 millimeters. Kampala, we had 9.3 millimeters. Mobende, we had 8 point of five millimeters and then Narua we had 0 0.7 millimeters. According to the radar that was taken this morning around Entebbe, we see that the rains were around Lake Victoria, some central part of the country. Later in the evening it was in most parts of Uganda. But this is because of the winds that are blowing in from Congo towards our country and also the local effect. It has contributed to the rains that we've had in some parts of Uganda, though we are being affected by the low pressure systems that are over the Indian Ocean. They are trying to take away most of the moist winds that would have come towards our country, leaving our, some of our part, some parts of our country with a sunny intervals. For tomorrow, we are expecting to start with sunny intervals in most parts of the country, apart from some few areas around the lake and some few areas in eastern and western parts of the country. Later in the afternoon, we are expecting isolated thunder showers in most parts of the country, apart from the eastern side, where we are expecting sunny intervals, and some few areas in western Uganda, where we are expecting us sunny intervals. Temperatures expected to rise to 24 degrees Celsius, that is in Kabale. Areas around Lake Victoria, we're expecting 30 degrees Celsius. Northern part of the country, we're expecting temperatures to rise to 32 degrees Celsius. Going beyond Uganda, we're expecting Dar es Salaam to have showers with temperatures rising to 31 degrees Celsius. Cloudy conditions are expected in Dubai and also in Beijing, with temperatures rising to 19 degrees Celsius in Beijing, so it's a bit cold in Beijing.
Beijing and New York, we're expecting showers with temperatures rising to 23 degrees Celsius. That's what we had in our so Continue tuning in to UBC for more information about that. Don't hesitate to click on our website. Have a happy Holy Week. Well, that does it for news tonight. For now, we do return at 10 o'clock. Elizabeth Nakakuni on Sign Language. I am Rodan Gonzi. Do stick around. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The second reason as to why we fast. We fast because we need Allah to elevate our levels of Iman. We all know we go through a lot, different tests here and there. As we go on, our levels of, of Iman keep on getting down. But as we do fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us that through fasting, our levels of Iman and Taqwa are going to be high. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps, as we fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in position to bless us with Taqwa within our hearts and souls. So if you ask today, why do you observe fasting? Why do you live out drinks, eats during daytime in Ramadan? Tell them that you really need to elevate your levels of taqwa, your levels of iman. And this is one of the reasons as to why we Muslims, we do...